Okay, hello again, welcome, this is Mr. Steele, and today I'm going to cover a topic that's not being covered right now in regular Algebra 2, but that we're covering a year long right now, and that is from Chapter 6, Graphing Some Polynomial Functions. And um, I've already created a function to graph since we've done this the last few days and people seem strong, but I want to make sure I have a video available to review if people need it. So already up here I've got my equation, y equals negative x squared times x plus 4, times x minus 3 to the third. So this graph will involve all the different steps, like we'll need to find all our piece of information, and we'll need to analyze and graph a few bounces and slides. So um, first, let's get started. Okay, so where we're going to start first is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in whatever information comes for free or comes kind of easy. So the first thing that I see is that I can see my a value. It's going to be negative 1. So do I find my pen? got a going to be negative 1. Now how I find that is I kind of go through and I realize that since this is in factored form I need to write it out um, or at least an approximation of the first term in polynomial form. So I need to figure out what would that first term become. So one way I can do that is I can really quickly do it or I can be more careful. I can figure out okay this is really negative x squared times x plus 4 times well since it's x minus 3 to the third we'll use what that really means. x minus 3 x minus 3, x minus 3. So there's our polynomial. We've just spread out the factors a little bit more. And now to find that first term, I just have to multiply the first part in each of these together. So negative x squared. Um, can I change colors real fast? Just to explain where I'm getting everything. So going up here, negative x squared, negative x cubed, negative x to the fourth, negative x to the fifth, negative x to the sixth. So in fact, my first term of this polynomial would be y equals negative x to the sixth. The rest of it we're not going to worry about so much. And so that tells me, first my a value, which I already said was negative 1, but then also my degree, because the degree is the highest exponent of the leading term, or the highest exponent of the polynomial, or the exponent of the leading term. So in fact, my degree is going to be 6, which means I know my shape. Any even degree leads to a bowl which is similar to a parabola, at least in its end behavior. And since this is a negative leading coefficient, and we've got a bowl, we're going to get a shape that looks, um, at least at the ends, like a sad parabola. So in fact, there is my direction. I don't know what just happened. There. Undo. Still learning my little program here. Okay. So there is um, some information I can start out with. Um, now that I know the degree, the shape, and the direction, I can actually go down here to the left end behavior and right end behavior, and I can actually say what it is. So since it's going to end, start, and finish like a sad parabola, I can go down here and realize that the left end behavior is going to negative infinity, or we can say that it's falling, and the right end behavior is also going to negative infinity, so it is also going to be falling. So on my graph, I can already say that somewhere down here, I'm going to have um, the arrows starting and ending at those spots. So I'm kind of ready to I'm ready to go. So next piece, I need to look at these zeros. Okay, so for my zeros, I just have to figure out what makes each of these individual factors equal to zero. So um, that doesn't actually have to be a very slow process. So the first one here, negative x squared. Well, that negative x squared is really just like negative x plus zero squared. So in fact, what would make that equal to zero would be zero itself. So we are going to have a zero at zero, zero. And because it's squared, because the corresponding term is squared, or excuse me, the corresponding factor is squared, that means we're going to have a double root right there. So I always I note that with just a little 2 to remind us that that's where that came from. And that means that our graph will end up with a bounce at that spot. Next, from this factor, x plus 4, what makes that equal to 0 would be negative 4. So we'll have just a normal 0 right at negative 4. Then finally, we've got x minus 3 to the third power. We're going to end up with a triple root there at 3 comma 0. And again, I noted that it's triple just by writing that little 3 up there. Um, next, I need to find my y-intercept by plugging in x equals 0. But notice that if I plug in x equals 0, the rest of this stuff doesn't even matter. It's basically insignificant because a 0 out here will give me negative 0 squared, which is just equal to 0. And in fact, since this first point here, 0, 0, is already on the y-axis, which you can kind of see when I plot it, that actually tells us that our y-intercept is also going to be 0, 0. So one of our zeros happens to be our y-intercept. We have a 0 at 0, 0. So from here, all we're left with is actually needing to graph the equation. And you know what? I don't want to use green pen. Let's really quickly 
change to, I don't know, let's go with purple, what the heck, Franklin colors. Okay, so, our points. First thing I'll do is I'm going to plot my zeros. So there's one, there's one, and there's one. So they're not really nice zeros because I'm not very good at drawing circles on this little thing yet. There, kind of a perfectionist. Okay, so with my zeros down, now I've got to figure out where everything's going to go. So remembering what I have, I'm going to have a bounce that occurs right here. I'll have some sort of little bounce. So it's going to hit and bounce off. It could be on either direction. I'm not sure yet. Then we're going to have a little slide here at 3, comma 0, where the shape will end up looking, something like that. Um, it's like a mini cubic function or a mini noodle there. So let's just start. My end behavior says I have to start down here. So let's go up. When I hit negative 4, nothing's going to happen. Like it's just a normal one. I'll just go right through. Now I've got to hit zero, 0, and I've got to bounce off, so boink, came back up. Finally, I can go back down, create a little slide in the middle, and then end my function, just like it says. should end going down, falling down to negative infinity. So there we go, got everything in. I started down at um, negative infinity, went back all the way up through the 0 at negative 4, 0. I bounced off zero, 0, Um, Again, it's not the world's best bounce, but pretend that I'm better at drawing than I am. Um, and remember, I can always just mark it with a B to indicate that it's a bounce. Came back up, and as I went down, I created a little slide, a place where it's kind of flat in the middle. And again, I can mark that with a little S. And then finally, continued on downward towards negative infinity, as my leb and reb, my end behavior, said I should. And so there it is, a fully graphed um, polynomial function, and in fact, a really um, poorly designed bowl, but a bowl just the same. So hopefully this video has been useful, and uh, this helps you review if you feel like you need to at this point. Thanks. Have a good night. Once again, this has been a Mr. Mike J. Steele video production. Leave him smiling.